Hey guys, it's been a while. So a lot of things going on in real life and since my last chichilers Emily passed away and I decided to not to have any more chichilers. And the decision is due to where I live in my country is more suitable to have some other animal than chichilers. So today's episode is about some true story of a chichiller keepers and how they breed these lovely creatures and the difficulty of becoming a good chichilla breeders. So if you're considering become one, you might want to spend 30 minutes to finish this informative video. Once upon a time, a group of people were deeply in love with these little creatures, named called chinchillas. They learn about how to raise them, how to breed them in the hope of providing the best welfare for these animals. They started an association, shared their knowledge, educate others, created exhibitions just like many other domesticated animals. Like many other animals, the chinchilla also has some common illnesses and diseases. One of the most serious ones is a dental problem and is a death sentence for a chinchilla. However, because the chinchilla is an exotic species, People don't know much about this creature back in the day. In addition, online communication was not that popular decades ago. People got very little information many years ago. Many people do not correctly recognize the dental disease in chinchilla. Very often, chinchilla died due to dental disease, and no one knew what the cause was. Occasionally, breeders have absorbed the correct knowledge of dental diseases when they travel to other countries to communicate. But whenever these breeders have the proper knowledge to promote it and try to popularize it, often find great difficulties and resistance. Hey, you know there are some chinchillas who have a dental problem at the show? I can feel the jawline, there are clearly half bumps. Who cares, nobody knows what's going on, most people have no knowledge about this, and since they are not 100% hereditary, even if hereditary, it takes 2-5 to five years for normal people to find out anyway as barely have people know how to feel the jawline lumps, we can blame on the animals themselves, just like cat kingly problem or dog's hip problem. It's important to breed fast to get babies for further breeding before they get too sick. Or just exchange a new one from the fur farm or seller, and put the chins to breed at 6 to 9 months old, get the offspring to sell, so we don't lose anything. Besides, malocclusion is not only happened by genetics inherited but it can also cause by diet and secondary environmental factors. Most of the owner doesn't have the correct knowledge anyway. Not even exotic vets can't tell the difference. We can just say we don't know and give them a new one for exchange. The most buyer will keep the mouth shut when they get a new animal for free. That's ridiculous. We need to educate everyone. I will send the invitation and create a social media community to share dental disease records with other breeders. Ha ha ha. I bred chinchillas for decades. I know very well the issue, no one will want to learn. Even new breeders get malocclusion educated, no one ever will do selective breeding as it costs much more. Not to mention if we import the new blood from fur farm found out the issue, has already been sold many to others. Who wants to ruin our own reputation by telling others our chins the line having an issue? No one will share this information and openly talk about this. She just wastes her time. Exactly, as long as we get beautiful animals to win the prize in the show, plus our long reputation, who will believe that we're breeding sick animals? Besides, most people have faith in old breeders, and only after colors and looking. How much cost and how long they live, nobody gives a crap about rodents' illness, as so cheap, if anything wrong just let them die to replace a new one. Hey, but what about the social media community? Many will know if she shares this information with the public? It won't last long because those influential large breeders and fur breeding would not be happy about it, as it will ruin their business. You will see as long as the community page get much fuss and complaints, her page will get shut down. Hey, I wanted to learn about the chinchilla's teeth problems to become a good breeder. Good that you want to learn about the health of chinchillas. Welcome. I also learning. Read about that sharing dental health community page? So many people making a fuss and argue about it. 
So many people try to report to her group, I think it will get shut down soon. Lol, of course, I also reported it, can't let that group openly share it, as we all have mixed the dental problem animals. If I have to share everything, all my herd animals are not clean. Precisely. All those years, my animals have been mixed with all the fur breeding lines. If we follow their rules to cull all the relatives, I have no clean animals, as I breed close relatives. Furthermore, who has the time to keep track of everything, including the sold offspring? Most of the time, the buyer only contact me when something happens. If they tell me to have a dental problem, I give them a new replacement and tell them it is a chin thing. They get a new replacement and are happy about it anyway. Those new breeders look all happy, dandy, and positive. Once they got to screw up and lost money for a new bloodline, I wonder if they still want to say call the line all crap. Lol. Ah, uh, there is 20 invitation, only a few of you come. That's okay hope more people can share the information on social media. What is selective breeding? Selective breeding means that you must call the line when you find out a chinchilla has a dental disease that is an inherited issue. Remove the parents and all the offspring out for further breeding. And when you find the common denominator, you call all related to it. How do you find the common denominator? You need knowledge about the family line, such as pedigree, health history. Follow up on offspring and their living environment. It is better to choose a breeder who has all records for their animals and follows up the offspring. That way is easier to find out if there is any problem and preferably no fur breeding line. Well, some people often argue that not all fur breeding has an issue, as there are zillions in each country. Yes, there are many fur breeding in one country, but is everyone buying from different fur breeding lines? No, most people buy from few well-known fur breeders, just like most pet owners like to buy from a well-known breeder of the most beautiful animal breeder. So, if these well-known fur breeders are corrupt, the pet breeders are pretty much screw, and when they screw, they just screw over the pet owners. It's just become a vicious circle like a dang plague. Exactly, it doesn't matter if they have 100 or 1000 different farms. The question is not about how many choices to buy the excellent quality bloodline, it is about the concept of how to breed and treat the animals. You can't be expected those fur farms to have the same value as most pet owners, as they kill and skin the animals as early as 6 to 12 months old. Some of the animals probably haven't even shown up any symptoms already get killed. Even if they were showing dental disease before one year of age, they wouldn't know as they don't care to educate. And thus not skilled enough to feel the jawline find out the issue. Especially in the early stages of dental disease, it will not show symptoms. Most of those farms just use the animals as money tools. When the animal only live one year of life, who cares about the animal's health? But not all countries fur breeding are that bad, right? Sure. Every country has different rules and education from the association for their members and breeders. That's why it is essential to ask questions, visit their herd, look at their animals, see how they handle teeth problems as an honest and knowledgeable breeder. We should openly talk about dental's disease. I would be skeptical if one told you they never had any teeth problems. As long as you purchase a new bloodline is always a risk as not everyone is honest. Particularly import from elsewhere unless the breeders have had their own breed for more than 10 years without any import and work very hard to clear out the teeth issue. From my experiences, those honest breeders would even tell you what period and how many animals they encountered the dental's disease issue. Instead of told you none in their whole breeding life, or told you as chin problem. Can't be solved. Or make a random excuse, like cat's kidney problems, or dog's hips problems. Some even worse blame the pet owner for lousy care, denying its inherited part to pass the buck. Yes, that's why honesty is essential, as it's a complex disease and will take many years of hard works to clear up the issue. Some breeders only take out the dental problem parents but keep the offspring for further breeding, however, they will tell the truth and let the buyer knows. Then some breeders just use their fame as a shield to cover up and breed sick animals on purpose, to make up for their loss when they import bad genetic lines from fur breeding and make profits. 
And then some breeders are still old fashionists thinking that if the herd has dentals problem animal is lousy breeder worry about ruin the reputation. Instead of educating properly, they rather hide it and make an excuse, they think no one will find out. Just like the lack of online communication in the 70s. But come on. It is 20th century, and the chinchilla world is tiny since it is an uncommon pet, go on social media ask around. You will quickly find out who has a bad reputation and often selling sick animals. Agreed. Most top repute healthy breeders or associations won't tolerate others breeding dental genetics animals. They will not hesitate to tell the truth, all we have to do is ask questions from different breeders and share our knowledge. Indeed. Knowledge is the key to provide good animals' welfare. Thank you for coming, and don't forget to share your knowledge and educate others. My chin found Malo and put to sleep already. He was under two years old, won the grand champion last year and already gave few offspring. Mine chin is worse. She is five years old, and she has two litters each year, already sold ten offspring to others, found dentals disease, what am I going to do? If you are positive they're an inherited issue, trace back all the offspring and inform those buyers, especially breeders. If you don't inform them, they will keep on breeding the sick line. I'm sure it is inherited. I contacted the person who sold me. She told me his parents got the disease and are already euthanasia. I'm also confirmed she is inherited. I asked her siblings those owners, and they told me her relative's offspring have dentals disease too. But no way in hell I'm going to contact all those buyers. I don't want people to know my herd have a dental problem. No one will ever trust my breeding. Besides, what if those buyers asking me to compensate? Did you make an agreement before you sold your animals? Nope. Who would think about pop up the disease when she is already five years old? Besides, who will prepare a selling agreement for rodents? Hey ladies, what's going on here? We found inherited dental disease in our chinchillas. And they already gave many offspring, we just don't know what to do. They suggested we cull the line and inform the buyers. But that suck. Not only have to concern ruin our reputations, if we cull the line with all the offspring, you know how much money we lost? Of course, it is no biggie if we can sell the offspring and earn back the cost. If we can't breed the offspring, do we still have to be honest to tell the buyer they have inherited issues? Most buyers won't buy the animals with inherited issues, which means we will be stuck with all the offspring. Plus the money we lost? If it happens only once in a while is no big deal. However, most breeders want to keep improving the herd from quality animals. We will likely purchase fur farms again as they have the most significant gene pool for selections. Things like this will happen repeatedly. No worry, if the animals are of good quality, keep the best one for further breeding, then sell the low quality to the pet's owner. You only lost the money for the dental disease parents. Yes, I often get beautiful chinchillas that are show quality from the fur breeding line, talk to the breeder and make a deal next time. If any dental disease happens, ask them to exchange a new one, so you don't lose any money. What about the offspring? Do you inform the buyer that they have inherited issues and might get the dental disease? That's not necessary. I often have genetic dental disease offsprings, I never tell the buyer, 90% of the buyer will not buy it. You have to realize, first of all, this disease is complex. Most people don't even know this disease exists. Is it the buyer own responsibility to check everything before they purchase an animal? Why should we bother? Second, it can be transgenerational inheritance, sometimes, the breeding parents are not inherited but only appear in the offspring. I can make an excuse that says I don't know. My chin's no problem that the previous seller lied to me or didn't tell me, there are plenty of excuse for that. Last, and the most crucial reason, the chinchillas are very good at hiding their pain. Most of them won't be found out until the chins have food decline, which is usually already two to five years old. By the time some owner won't care and just buy a new one, as most people expected rodents are short life anyway. Is that how you sold me three chins that have inherited dentals issues and not telling me? Are you insane? I'm a breeder, not a pet owner? How many sick genetic offspring would I get if I didn't discover early and breed them as you did? Hey! I really have no idea, I also paid a lot of money for the Angora myself and didn't get a refund or anything from the person who sold me either. I also lost money. 
Besides, we agree that refunds you 50 euro if found malocclusion is under 18 months. You got a 100 euro refund for Emily and Felix, but Bandit, his mother, showed dental problems when 6 years old. It could be a secondary factor. 50 euro refund for short hair makes sense, but for Angora baby? 50 euro refund, when you sold for 250 350 euro each. You didn't get a refund because you trust a lousy breeder and willing to take a risk, but I don't. I agreed on the terms because they're two well-known breeders recommended you, and I trust them, consider it is my own fault. Even so, you should have informed me. I found out by myself, you obviously want to hide it from me. The second factor is that your whole herd took antibiotics because they got Jardia disease by purchased a chinchilla from a fur farm? Have you mentioned this to me? Bandit's mother is six years old found out teeth problem, you should also tell me. I don't care if it is a secondary or inherited factor, an honest breeder should tell the truth to prevent any lousy genetics from passing down to the descendant. You breed animals that have dental issues is caused by secondary factors is your choice, but I don't. Oh, cry me a river. Everybody does the same. Just sell the dental genetics offspring to the pet's owner, as they don't breed. By some luck, it might not show up until late or not inherited at all, nobody knows as long as we all say the same thing and you just keep your mouth shut. Indeed. Many people get used to rabbits and guinea pigs or hamsters, those short lifespan rodents, most of the people don't expect a rodent to live that long. Not to mention, chinchilla is the popularity unmatched with other rodents. Their knowledge is so tiny so why bother to educate such a complex disease and ruin our business and reputations? It's absurd. We're registered breeders, not backyard breeders, people have faith in us because our animals have a pedigree and a registered association. Shame on you guys with a registered title but doing backyard breeding business. I'm quick. What about you both? Want to join their silly group, don't earn anything but always have to lose money? Or join our friends club? we protect each other. I'm with you guys. I don't want to lose money for my hobby of breeding whenever I get terrible genetics. I agree just keep the mouth shut exchange a new one. Sorry, but I lost too much money for a new bloodline. I would take the parents out but not cull the offspring since it is not 100% inherited. It's pointless. Look around all the breeders' websites and association magazines. No one talks about this dental disease. They obviously want to hide it for the buyers. And whoever talks about it they will punish you and get in trouble. I just got some complaints about the community group and got shut down, there was too much inappropriate language and argument. I don't understand why we have different associations and rules, associations become like friends or mafia clubs. I know, it's frustrating, over the years, I lost much money for importing sick genetics dental disease chinchillas from the fur breeding line. Since I only put them in breeding when they were 18 months, sometimes it happens two generations later found malocclusion. A few years later, the whole line I work so hard to improve has to be culled it removed from breeding. And since I don't want my animals to suffer from the disease, as soon as I find out I put them to sleep, I don't get any money by selling evil genetic offspring. More and more good quality animals have this disease, I got no healthy animals to breed or sell. I'm sort of forced to end my hobby after 15 years. It is awful, what they did is totally a scam, there are no rules about it, so either join their clowns, everyone holding hand pending is all fine. Do they realize sooner or later most of the chinchillas would have a shorter life? And we continually get destructive genetic animals and no healthy chinchillas to breed? They supposedly can live from 8 to 12 years? Since when buying a chinchilla is like a gamble? Roll dice? Is life animals we talking about, not stuffed animals? That stupid community are not the only social media. As you said is 20th century, there are more than 10 different social media nowadays. Even I'm out of breeding, I will still educate people with the proper knowledge of this horrible disease. Screw their chinchilla utopia. Same here. As you can see, becoming a good chichula breeder is not only about monies and the environment to think about, 
It's more about breeding some healthy non-genetic teeth from tree chewers, which is we call selective breeding. And since we all live in different countries, there are many different breeding cultures, association, and some countries might not even have any breeding organization, which is really unhealthy, by the way. Because of the importance of the selective breedings, many breeders would at least need to spend minimum 10 years to starting to have some good quality and healthy chichulas with no dental disease. But that doesn't really mean that young breeders will have a more bad genetic chichulas or 30 years of experienced breeders will have a more healthy chichulas. Now, it's more depending on the breeder themselves if they are willing to do selective breeding or not. Because it can cost a lot of money to call the lines if that happens. Now, take my five Mallow chichulas for example. They were purchasing from different breeders, and one of them actually has more than 30 years experience. But sadly, she is one of those who have over 100 chichilers and like to import from a fur farm and breed close bloodline. So if these chichilers have bad genetic disorders and need to call the line, that will probably mean that they end up need to kill half of their chichilers to eliminate the bad genetic one, which many will not do so, because that will lose too much money and effort just like you saw on the earlier story. Now, many breeders often said that they breed chichilla for hobbies, but when it came down to it, you will find out many actually breed for money and flame. You often heard that they say, I breed for quality improvement, but hey, you heard a full of two problem chichillas and not calling the lines. So how can one improve anything if keep breeding sick genetic animals? So are these breeders still breed for hobbies and improvements? That's a big question for anyone who want to think about if you want to learn to become a good chichilla breeder. So please don't hesitate to contact some good chichilla breeding organization to get a good mentor if you really decide to give it a go. There are a couple of associations to accept well my members if you are interested. I will put up a link below and try to talk to more breeders and get cross reference to buy your first pair. And that's all for today and hope this video can help you to understand the difficulty to become a good and responsible chichilla breeders. Don't just breed them because they were too cute. And that's all for today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!